Good afternoon, Fly Tires. It's Tom and Julia this week. Julia, come on, come on and say hello. I know you. Hello, there she hello. is. Great to see you all. And I'm tell so us how it's fly tell us season. how Irene is doing. Everybody wants I, to know. I, Irene's doing really well. She's taking a nap right now. She's she's a rock star. Good. Dressed her up as a pumpkin yesterday. Oh wow! And yeah, you're I taking know. her on the train to Florida. That's very exciting. <laughs> So we are taking a family Amtrak adventure in a couple of months. We'll let <laughs> you know how that goes. That should be fun. <laughs> that should be really fun. Yeah. All right. Well, have fun, Tom. Okay, Ask Julia. Your questions in the comments, y'all. Thank you, and we'll Thank and you. we'll vote. We'll vote for the winning fly uh, at the end, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win this week. Um. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to um, welcome to a Monday afternoon of fly tying. I hope some of you are going to tie along. If you are um, if you are not uh, if you've never been on one of these, um, welcome. If you're new, welcome. We do these. Try to do these once a week. We don't always do them once a week, uh, but uh, and then once a month we do a tie off uh, between myself and the great Tim Flagler, and I usually lose but we have a good time doing it. A um, couple announcements. Uh, I'm going to be in the Orvis New York store. Let me look it up here. I'm going to be in the Orvis New York store on uh, November 9th from, I think, 4 to 6. And um, doing a presentation on taking your trout fishing to the next level. And then uh, the weekend after that, which is the uh, 11th and 12th, I'm going to be at the International Fly Tying Symposium in um, Somerset, New Jersey. And I'm teaching some classes there. They're private classes. You do have to pay for them. Um, but I don't think they're quite full yet. So if you're interested, uh, get online and look at the International uh, Fly Tying Symposium um, in New Jersey. And you can sign up. You can sign up for them there. We're going to do some of my favorite trout patterns there. So anyway, um, if you're interested, love to see you there. But today we're going to tie a little tiny fly. Um, we're going to tie. I'm I'm going to attempt to tie a size 24 uh, uh, sparkle dun tied with uh, synthetic fibers instead of deer hair because you just can't you just can't get deer hair fine enough to tie something as small as a 24. You could, but it, it wouldn't look very good. It'd be really bulky. So uh, when you're tying these little tiny flies, it's best to um, it's best to use a, a synthetic wing. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be using a fulling mill ultra dry yarn, but you can use some um, EP. Uh, trigger point fibers, they're very good to use. Polypropylene yarn isn't quite as good. It tends to mat up. It doesn't It doesn't shake the water off when you false cast as easily. So the wings are hard to see and they don't hold their shape. Um, and, you know, people, people are afraid of tying tiny flies. And uh, it, it's all a matter of uh, vision and light. Um, you need a lot of light. And you need you need some close-up glasses for for most of us. Um, you need some you need some magnifying glasses, uh, some three X or four X uh, readers, or uh, you can get the uh, Orvis uh, super magnifiers online, which I think you can get in three X and four X. You can't usually get those in a drugstore or anything. Um, ones that are that um, that powerful, or you can get one of these visors that has the flip down. Uh, magnifier, but you really do need some magnification. And a tying a fly this small is really not that hard, uh, as I'm going to show you. And I, it's going to be difficult for me because I have to work in front of the camera and I, I, I have to get pretty close to the fly. So it, it should be easier for you um, than it will be for me. A um, couple other tips is that um, you, want, you really want to use with a fly this small 12 -0 thread. Um, it's just that you try to use a heavier thread and you're just, just going to build up too much bulk and the fly isn't going to look good. And you're going to crowd the eye. Um, the other thing with small flies is using uh, big eye uh, dry fly hooks. 
these hooks are, let me show you one actually. So these hooks are uh, standard, standard dry fly hooks. This is a 24, but you can see how big that eye is. And um, it makes them, makes them, makes them a lot easier to thread. And also, you know, there's times when you're fishing these tiny flies on a river with uh, fairly large fish, like the, hen uh, for instance, the Henry's fork is a, is a pretty good example in Idaho. And you can, you can put a 5X tippet on this fly. Now you're not going to get as good of a drift as you would with six or seven X. Um, but you can usually make it work if you use long enough tippet and pretty difficult to hold those Henry's fork rainbows on six X. Um, so you can get a heavier tippet through the eye. Um, they're just easier to thread. And I, I don't be afraid of tying and fishing small flies. This fly is an imitation of an olive mayfly. And um, it's in the baited uh, family, but it's not a baitus. It's a, um, I don't know, they used to call them pseudocleons, but I think that the taxonomist changed the genus and species, and I don't even remember what it is. But they're little tiny skinny uh, olive uh, mayflies. And they hatch this time of year. It's about the only hatch you may see are these little tiny olives and the fish often eat them. And boy, uh, you know, fishing a 20 or even a 22, sometimes you just can't get the fish to take. So there are times when you need a fly this small. The other, the other small mayfly uh, that you might need a, a done this small for are the trico duns. Uh, trichos usually hatch from uh, midsummer to early fall. And they can be pretty tiny too. So, and I use, I actually use this same pattern that I'm going to tie today for both the, the little olive duns and the trico duns. They're pretty similar in color and size. So um, I use it for both. Um, but, you know, when you need them, you need them. So, um, you know, again, don't be afraid of tying these small flies because it's, um, it, it's, it's kind of a leap of faith. You just got to get used to working with the smaller hooks. And once you, once you do it, you'll find that it's not that hard. Uh, Peter doesn't have any sound. It looks like everybody else has sound. <laughs> Sorry, Peter. I guess it's at your end. <laughs> um, anyway, um, I'm going to start. Everybody ready? And I think we'll. I think this is a pretty simple fly, so I think we'll have time to tie a spinner imitation uh, of the same may mayfly again on a size 24 hook. So let's start. So that's a size 24 uh, big eye hook. And I have 12 O thread. And I am going to, in this fly, I start the thread right at the eye and work back a little bit. And then I even come back to the eye. I tend to find that when I put the wing on this fly, it tends to get pushed back a little. And I want the wing a little bit back from the eye, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna start right there. So we got the thread attached. Now we're gonna, gonna get our, I put the wing on first. And uh, what I'm gonna use is this uh, Fulling Mill Ultra Dry Yarn. It's brand new. Uh, Orvis sells it. I it's my new my new favorite fly tying material. I think equally good is uh, is EP Trigger Point. That's pretty good stuff too. I know there are going to be questions about what else you can use. Um, and you see, it kind of comes in strands like this. And I'm going to take about half a strand. So I'm going to just cut one off. And then I'm going to cut, I'm going to pull it in half, maybe not half, maybe I'll take like three quarters of it. And I don't know how much, I don't know really a good way of telling you how much to use. Just, you know, cut a, cut a bunch off, tie a fly, see how it works, and then either go, you know, go more or less. Um, you know, the first fly you tie is not going to be 
not going to be that great in any pattern. I always practice these flies before I start. So I've got a small, short uh, bunch of this yarn. And I start this. This may be too much yarn. Well, we'll find out. I start this by crossing over on the far side and just carefully making sure that stays on top. Take a couple really firm wraps. And then I'm going to separate these and do a cross wrap the other way. So what I've got is kind of two little, two little wings there. And I've kept this long on purpose because it makes it easier to manipulate. Then I'm going to pull the yarn up and just take about two wraps around the base, sort of like when you make a post, but you don't want to form a real post. You just want to kind of gather those fibers together and that kind of keeps everything together so this is what it looks like now and then i like to trim it now i like to um, trim it and you want it about about a shank length maybe a little bit longer maybe about here i think like so so now you've got your wing and this stuff uh, sheds water really well. So with a single false cast, uh, you can dry it off. And it also um, has a nice profile. You know, it has a nice wide profile. So uh, it shows up for the trout and you can see it as well. And I'm going to come behind the wings, just kind of move them forward. Come, whoops. Oh, I lost my, <laughs> I lost my uh, post. Now it's going to be hard to post it because I cut it off. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. All right. So carefully come behind the wing, take a couple turns. All right. So there's the wing. Nothing too. Nothing too difficult. Again, it's 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 tiny, but it's not that uh, not that hard. And then I'm gonna uh, make my shuck. And for the shuck, uh, you can either use um, Antron yarn, or you can use Zelon. Either one. I don't like this. Uh, I don't like the uh, FMF uh, Ultra Dry because it's a little bit. It's a little bit too kinky uh, for the shuck. It just it it gets kind of, it gets bulky. Uh, so I I like this tan antron. You could use tan or brown. Sometimes the shucks on these mayflies are tan. Sometimes they're brown. And I'm going to cut a piece of this off. And that place where it's kinked, I'm just going to get rid of it because that's not going to help me any. And then so I've got a got a, a hunk of of this and i just want to grab i don't know maybe a dozen fibers or fewer and just kind of peel it off till you get just a just a it's probably more than a dozen maybe 15. Oh, that's a little bit too much i'm going to get rid of a few of those you don't want much for this shuck there we go and then even off one end with your scissors then probably helps to wet it. And then I'm going to put this on the near side of the wing and try to grab it. I'm having trouble seeing because because um, I can't get as close to this as I want to because of the camera. I think I grabbed it. Yep. Yeah. And then just wind back. And you may you may bind a couple of those fibers in. You can get rid of them later. 
and go all the way back to the bend. So you get just that little, that little shuck on the end. And then cut it off about a shank length or a little shorter. It's probably a little too, yeah, that's all right. A little too short. I cut that off a little too short, but no big deal. You could even probably tie this uh, without, without a tail. I'm going to go in and without a shuck, I'm going to go in and just kind of make sure I didn't bind down any fibers. So we're almost done. Now we need some, some dubbing for the body. I have to go get my dubbing because I left it on my tying table. Luckily, it's right behind me. The best stuff for tying these tiny flies is Spectre Blend dry fly dubbing. And these flies are a pale olive. So I'm going to grab just a little hunk of pale olive dubbing. That's enough for about half a dozen flies right there or more. This fly is a fairly pale olive, almost yellowish. And then I'm going to I'm going to just take a little tiny tiny fuzz of this and put it on the hook very tightly, as tightly as you can dub it. And then I'll come down and put a little bit more on. Not much taper here. I want this to be Want this to be and kind of sneak that up there a little bit. So let me just show you because you can't really see that how much dubbing I have on here. I'm going to move the camera a little bit here. So as you can see, I just got a little tiny bit of dubbing there, not much at all. Okay, I'll check my focus here. There we go. Now oh, it's in focus. And now I'm just going to carefully hold that shuck or just move it off to the side. And as soon as I get my first turn of dubbing going, I'm going to start to move forward. And you might you might catch a couple of those fibers under. And then just go around the wing. And you might want to go back again. And then whatever you have left, use to form the head of your fly. So you got a, you know, just a little bit of a thorax there. Looks like I have a little bit of dubbing there and then a whip finish and you're done that's it now you can tie bigger flies this way too but it's a very simple and very effective and pretty visible for a small fly my camera's so close i can't get my whip finisher in here and then four turns One of the things I recommend, this fly is so small that instead of cutting your thread, just bring your scissors up to the very edge of your thread and just kind of saw it off. Or use a razor blade or something. And there you've got a nice clean little size 24 sparkle done. And again, it's pretty visible for a small fly that wing sticks up and um, you know you're gonna miss some fish in these small flies you're gonna lose some fish on these small flies but i'm telling you uh, sometimes when you uh, when you need one you really need one so i'm going to take this out so 
and sit down here and take questions and then we'll and then i'll tell you the spinner of the same the same bug so do we have any any questions julia i see does tail color matter for the shuck i don't think so i don't think so keith i mean the the shuck is kind of a tannish brown so tan or brown um you know what if, if you got another color and you don't have that fine you you can use i don't think it makes that much difference I've been told that the color of the post doesn't matter to the fish or can't be seen by the fish. Does this mean the path, the post could be a bright orange or pink? You know, the fish can't see it that well until it gets into their window and then they can see it. Uh, and I've, <laughs> I've tried them with bright orange posts. I don't think they work as well. Um, I, I like to try to match the color of the wing of the mayfly, but maybe a shade lighter so it's easier for you to see. But um, you could try some with an orange post. I don't think it's going to work that well, honestly. Um, the fish can see the fish can see the wing. They can't see it when it first, you know, when it's first entering their uh, field of view. But um, then once it gets uh, directly overhead, when the fish gets close to it, they can see the wing. What would be the ideal situation to toss this one? Roger, the only time you ever want to use this is when the fish are eating tiny mayflies and they're not eating anything else. This is not a fly to blind fish. Uh, you know, if there's no fish rising, you need to have fish that are, that are, that are rising steadily and won't take, you know, a beetle or an ant or a parachute atom size 20. <laughs> because you don't want to, you don't want to have to use a little fly like this unless you have to. Use polar bear colored EP trigger point fibers for the wing. Yeah, that should be a perfect color, Ed. Should be a perfect color. Uh, Julia, if I missed any other questions? Yes, you could. Um, Brian, you could tie this uh, as an emerger. You, you could, uh, you know, make the, put the wing down at a little bit lower angle and uh, tie it as an emerger and then maybe put a little fur head of, in front of it. Yes, absolutely. You could tie it as an emerger. Is there any downside tying this with the Orvis big eye dry fly? No, James, there is only an upside. That's why I tied it with an Orvis big eye dry fly. <laughs> There's no downside. That's the hook I would recommend with a, with a fly this small. Uh, let's see, Julia. Any, any, have I missed any other ones? I have to ask, what is the smallest fly? I didn't see any. I think you've got them all. Oh, what is the smallest fly you've caught a trout on? I think I once caught a trout Ooh. on a size thir a 32, but that was a long time ago. And I, I don't, I don't fish much. I don't fish any smaller than 26 anymore. I, you know, if I, I feel I need a smaller fly, I'll just tie it really sparsely on a 26. But there are places, there are a few rivers where fish eat really tiny midges where sometimes you need something even smaller, or they say you do anyways. Uh, did I get them all? Okay. So let's tie the spinner. Fairly similar, except uh, I put tails on the spinner. So um, let's go and let's go and tie the spinner. So I gotta get another size twenty four hook. Best way to grab these hooks is to wet your finger and press down on them. And now I can't pick it up. There we go. And I'm gonna put the hook in the vise. It's surprising that most good quality vices these days will uh, handle a size 24 hook. This is a Ranzetti Traveler that I use, and it works great. Um, but you can, you know, you can use almost almost any any good quality vice will hold hooks this small pretty well. Okay, so I got a hook in the vise. 
That's easy. I'm going to start the same way. Starting my thread right at the eye, then come back to the eye. Now for this one, I'm going to use an even smaller amount of, uh, of that fiber. So I'm going to take... I'm going to take an even smaller amount, just pull some fibers off. That looks about right. You want your, you want the wing on this spinner to be really sparse. You don't need much, just the impression of those wings. Just something that kind of holds a little water and gives a fish the impression. So sometimes you can twist this to make it behave a little bit better for you. And probably wetting it does help somewhat. Tom, we have I a couple it. questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, Keith is asking, what size would you tie this up to? I mean, I, I, I'm guessing this is both the one you just tied and the one you're currently tying. You could tie the. You could tie this up to. Uh, you know, you could tie this up to a size twelve. Really, We're, we just happen to be. We just happen to be tying a really small one today, but you could tie this pretty big. This pattern works. I use this in in lots of different mayflies. So yeah, and, you could go you go big on it. And uh, David's asking if this is an early winter pattern. You know, I think that after usually after November, uh, the the little the little olives stop. You might see, there are a few places where you see tiny olives during the winter time um, on, a, on a nice, uh, warm, sunny day. But usually after November, you don't see as many of these. Typically after November, if you see fish rising, it's midges and not mayflies. And I did, I think we missed one. Um, okay. And, but I thought you might have answered it. Uh, Ed asked that they said that they use polar bear colored EP trigger fibers for the wing. And he's curious if that's a good color. Yeah, I, I answered that one. And I yeah, said, that's yeah, what I thought. That, okay. That's yeah. what I thought. Okay. Oh, Someone you know, else had I forgot. Had mentioned I forgot. It. Yeah, I forgot something. I'm going to start this fly over. Uh, since I'm going to split the, since I'm going to split the tails, I want, I want to come back and wrap over my tag end of thread and leave it there. Then I'm going to spiral back to the front because this is, this is, I'm going to use this to split the tails. All right. So I got that little piece of uh, very small sparse piece of yarn. I'm going to wet it again because it dried out. Get that tag out of the way. And I'm going to start it the same way. Cross over, catch it, and then pull this one and come behind. Oops, I caught that the wrong angle. Now I'm going to trim these again about a about a shank length. Oh, I can't get in there and see too well. I'm going to trim both sides. Oops. So I've got hard to see here. And I'm going to take another Another figure eight around these to kind of gather them together a little bit better and straighten them out. Ugh, that looks terrible. I can't see. I'm going to start this again. Because I, I just can't, I can't get in there too easily. And I can't see that well. So I'm going to start again. Get another piece of yarn and start. Bear with me here. I told you this is easy. 
but it is easy if you can get closer to the vise. Got a couple little strands there. There we go. Okay. All right. So I'm going to grab another piece of yarn and um, see if I can do a little better job on that. Maybe I'll use a little bit more. And again, for the first couple flies, it's going to be kind of trial and error. All right. I'm going to take my glasses off because I'm near, really super nearsighted. So I can see closer without wearing my glasses. So now I'm going to try to I'm going to spin that thread counterclockwise so it jumps back a little bit. I'm going to try to get that on top. Couple okay, we curves. have two questions, Tom. Okay. He's asking if you would ever tie a small dropper such as a midge emerger below this fly. Not on this one. It's just if I'm fishing flies this small, I'm going to use a single fly. Because mm -hmm. I want to be super accurate. And I, I just think that you don't want to mess around with adding another. And it's not going to float very well. So I don't, you know, if I'm fishing a small fly like this, I'm fishing to an individual rising fish or, you know, several. Um, and I want pinpoint accuracy and I don't want anything screwing up my drift. Uh, so I, no, I, I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't, you could, but I wouldn't personally. So gonna... And Greg's asking, uh, would the rod size matter on a fly this small? Uh, no, not really. You know, I fish these, with rods as heavy as a as a five weight, sometimes a four or a three, it gives you a little more delicacy. And mm. um, but um, you know, I fish these with nine oh five standard trout rod. Okay, so those wings look much better now. Okay, yeah, one more, more like... question. One more question. Okay, all right. Uh, all right. Peter's asking if you can use high vis for the wing. Not on a spinner. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't because these these wings are going to lay flat in the surface film and you do want something that looks like the wing of a mayfly. You don't want orange or pink or anything mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Back to it. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to get my tails and you can use a couple of hackle fibers for this. Or you can use microfibits. Now I'll grab my microfibits here. Um, this is just basically paintbrush. It's all it is. But uh, we, you know, so you could probably go to the store and buy a paintbrush if it's the right color. You could even dye a paintbrush. They're paintbrush bristles. They're nylon paintbrush bristles. But uh, you can buy them in a fly shop. They they're called microfibits. And you can also use hackle fibers. Um, and I just want two. I just want two tails on this bug. That's all I need. A little, just a little balance and a little impression of the tails. Um, and I'm just going to find, get where I can grab two of them together. <laughs> Sometimes this is hard. Okay, there's two. There's three. Get out of there. Okay. And then line them up before you cut them. And cut them off. And then you want these tails to be about a shank length, maybe a little bit longer. Sometimes the tails on the spinner are a little bit longer. And just line them up right there over the top of it. And bind them down to the top of the hook shank. You want to try to keep these on top of the hook shank. And go all the way back. Cut the remainder off. And then either with the point of your scissors or a, a dubbing needle. Boy, I can't get in here with this camera. <laughs> um, 
if you poke them upright like this, they tend to separate. I can't even see if they're separated. Just kind of lift them up and they'll, generally they'll separate. There they go. Okay, so they're separated. And then I'll take this piece of thread, the tag end of my thread, and just pass it through those two tails. Oh, I missed it. Did I get it? Yeah. Pass it through the two tails. And tie it down. And you can manipulate these tails a little bit so that they're split. So you can see the tails are split. You can move them around a little bit. You may want to put a little drop of head cement here, but be very careful. You want a little tiny drop. Take one more turn to secure that thread and cut it off. So that thread was there just to help split the tails. So you got, you can see that? Yeah, you can see that the tails are split. And now we're going to finish it the same way as the other fly with just a tiny fuzz, barely. Just, you want to start with, a, you know, so small a piece of dubbing that you can barely see it. And if your first one goes on a little too thick, push it down and then put a smaller amount above it. And try to sneak that up toward the hook a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit more dubbing on here. And really crank down on this dubbing because you want it thin and tight. And now we're going to carefully hold on to the tails so that they don't get knocked out of place. And wind your dubbing forward. It's kind of hard sometimes to kind of work it back and forth so that it doesn't get those wings. And then I like to figure eight it around the, around the uh, wings. And then I ran out of dubbing, so I can either call it good, because it looks like I got a pretty good body there, or I could oh, I'm gonna take a chance and just add a little bit more dubbing. Just a tiny bit. That might be too much, but we'll see. Oh, that'll work. So there we go. Cute little spinner. Whip finish. And again, you can tie, you can tie this in much bigger flies if you want. You could, you know, make these any 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 size mayfly spinner you want, up to a 12 or so, maybe even a 10. Uh, but it is a great way of tying these tiny flies. This so simple. Less is more on these tiny flies. And then again, I'm going to cut my thread using the edge of my scissors. And so focus that a little bit more. There's your little spinner. Not that hard. Not that hard. Take your time. Use lots of light. And... Very small amounts of material. So super simple. Um, but if you, you know, if you are tying tiny flies, that's the way to go. Don't try to overcomplicate them. What? Okay. We have any other questions? Uh, what size tippet do you drop down to? Well, David, if um, 
if the fish aren't really big and it's not weedy and a lot of snags, uh, I might use seven X on this. I'd, I'd try six X first. And if they're, you know, it's a situation where the fish are, are large, say, you know, 14 inches or bigger, um, I would try five X. You can put five X through the eye of a 24 big eye hook, knowing that you're going to have to be really careful in your presentation because it's going to tend to drag a little bit easier than than five uh, than six x or seven x, um, but you can you could use five x on this long tip. It maybe go long and try to get above the fish and throw a slack downstream cast is is sometimes the best way to go. But you you're probably gonna you know you're probably gonna get some refusals on five x. Um, but if the fish are big and you know you can't land them on six, then you know try five. I collect my daughter's makeup brushes when they wear out. One brush is a lifetime supply. Ah, good idea, Roger. Good idea. What are your favorite fishing-related podcasts? <laughs> uh, what are my favorite fishing? You know, I don't listen to, I don't listen to many fishing podcasts um, unless someone asks me to. Um, so I don't. I don't really listen to any other. I listen to podcasts, but not fishing podcasts. So uh, I, I can't really play favorites because I don't. I don't. I don't know enough about them. How long a leader for very small streams? Uh, could probably probably ed for fishing tiny flies like this on a very small stream first of all i would i would almost never fish a fly this small on a, on a small stream unless it was a spring creek because you don't need to go this small generally the fish are um, not that selective um, but if i was in a spring creek um, minimum of nine feet i know they're higher to cast but um, longer leaders are going to be better Fishing a six foot six inch glass rod. Yeah, nine footer at nine or twelve foot would be in small streams. But I don't think you're gonna need I don't think you're gonna need a fly this small in a small stream. Not very often, anyways. All right. Any other questions? So we got through two of them. See how easy small flies are? Not that hard. Not that hard at all. What day is scheduled for your tie-off with Tim? Okay, uh, our tie-off is next Tuesday, so a week from tomorrow um, with Tim. And I don't know what pattern yet. It's my turn to pick, and I haven't decided. So we'll we'll let you know. And we'll let <coughs> we'll let you know either late this week or early next week. Uh, but uh, it'll be next Tuesday at three p.m. Uh, any other questions? No. Well, well, you're very welcome, Ed. Thank you. I don't think you've missed many of these, have you? Okay. Um, if there are no other questions, we will dismiss the class. I hope to see you at the, uh, the International Fly Tying Symposium or at the New York store. If you, uh, if you can make it, love to see you there. And thanks for tuning in today, and thanks for your great questions. Those are all really, really good questions, and that's that's why we like to do this live, is so that um, so that we can answer your questions as we tie. Um, well, thank you, William. That's very nice of you. All right, everyone. Um, maybe I'll see you in New York or New Jersey. If not, I'll see you next Tuesday when. Uh, I will probably once again lose to Tim Flagler. I think I'm on a losing streak, but you know, um, Tim's uh, one of the best in the world. So I guess guess I can't complain. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>